Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and we're here at the GTS Distribution Come and Play Day event in Atlanta 2016. I'm here with Richard from Upper Deck. And Richard, you brought with you a game. I did bring a game. Uh, in fact, I brought The Crow. Fire, Fire it, it up. up. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you for bringing that. We got it set up here on the table as well. Maybe you can tell us though before we dive in, what exactly is the theme here? Although the name does give me a little clue. <laughs> the name, yeah, absolutely. The name gives you a slight clue. So for those of us who are, you know, just a little bit older, uh, and even some of us who are yes. younger, remember The Crow uh, very fondly. It was a very cool IP. So the movie, this is the movie, okay. thematically, all yes. right? So, um, we are playing two sides, essentially. Um, they are going to be Crow and Eric Draven's group, if you will, and then yep. there's the Motor City Gang. And the Motor City Gang in the show killed Eric right. and his fiance, and so we pick up in the game a year later. And Eric's so out for revenge, isn't he? He's absolutely out for revenge. <laughs> so th this is him a year later. The crow has revived him. So the crow is on his team. He's there. He's got Sarah, you know, he's yes. befriended, and uh, the police officer who he's also quasi befriended. Uh, so his mission now yes. is to exact his entire revenge on the Motor City gang. They don't know he's a here, yeah. of course. So for the first few turns, they don't really understand that the crow is back or Eric Draven is back to take revenge. They're on Devil's Night and they're wreaking mayhem and madness in the city and they're trying to burn it down. Burn everything down, yeah. Burn it Set all the fires down. everywhere. Fire it up. <laughs> exactly. Right? And, and I guess the, the two sides of this, the gangsters and the crow on that side, they have uh, d different objectives. Different right? objectives, absolutely. Uh, the game is an asymmetric game, right? Okay. Uh, so, not only do we just talk about the objectives being my job to kill all of the gangsters, I have to kill the gangsters in a particular order. Uh, in the movie, I killed them in the order of you know the harm that they caused to me, so I killed them in boom, boom, yes. boom. Uh, in a game terms, I can't do that because you'd figure out exactly I know who you're going kill. for, right? right. Yes. Uh, so there are these random tokens uh, that I will be using. There's four of them. Once I kill four of those guys, then I can kill a lieutenant. And then top dollar, the main bad guy comes out, and then my job is to kill him, and the game ends on my side. Yeah, we can kind of show that here on the board, actually. Absolutely. We, we sort of set the board up as if we've already played a few turns, Yep. right? And so we have it so that you've already killed one of, one of the gang members here. I have indeed. That's actually the, the death token. But this token would have been sitting on here initially, is correct. That correct? It would have been sitting in right. my stack, uh, which is the death list, right. and there's four of them there to begin the game. And you can only look at the top one, is that right? I can only look at so the top one. you knew this was your first target, you went correct. after that, defeat it, and then this token sits here. Now you have looked at the second token already, you know who you're correct. going after next, right? And ultimately, you're trying to get the attention of top dollar here who's just in the pit right. having a nap. Right he now. doesn't come out for <laughs> any old reason, he's fine, his gang's doing just great, he's burning down the city. Right. He only comes out for real big problems because you know, he's the top dollar. Sure, and then once he's out, if you can defeat him, that's how you win, right? That is exactly how the crow side wins. How I win is a little, a little more delicate because uh, yes, I want to burn everything down, of course. But there's right. this whole deck, right, of objective cards here, and at right. the beginning of the game, I'm drawing one off, and that's going to tell me what it is that I'm trying to do uh, for this game. So I actually Correct. am not telling the crow what I have, but I have a secret objective here that I'm trying to complete. And you usually have sort of two steps to them, is that right? There are, there are two steps in the card, and then there's the third final phase of that card. It gets enacted. So okay. the, the first step of the card will be the thing that you cannot do. Right. Then the second phase of that card is a thing that you must do in order to complete your mission, right? So, for example, it might be to burn seven tokens worth of buildings. Each yes. building, as you'll see, has a number of fire symbols that equals their hit points, if you will, in right. fire. And then you can say, aha, here's my true objective. Eric now is alerted to my objective, and maybe it's now to burn down the church. Right, and then if you can succeed in that, you win. Then you yeah. win the game, absolutely. Okay. So then at that point, it's the race. You know, Eric now must stop the gang from burning down that church. And really, he still must kill the entire, he must wipe the whole gang out. Right. So it's a real tough race at that point. So, and, and of course, because there's multiple objectives, the game changes each, each time. time. Play. Right. Not only that, though, right? The board changes each time. Right, because this is a modular board. We've set it up here, yep. right? But this, when you when you set it up, you can arrange it. You arrange it randomly. Uh, there are two sides to each of these boards. So again, multiple playability, and each one of these tokens, there are just simple circles that the token is played on top of. So you shuffle the tokens in the beginning of the game, 
and you'll randomly place them. So again, the buildings will change, yes. and the maps change. Okay. So. And with the way we set up here, because there's two of us, I'm controlling all the gang members, but if you had more players, you could divide up the duties, right? Yes, I'm correct. The gang. I will say that the game absolutely functions at its peak at a 1v1, yeah. uh, and then secondarily, one player playing the crow side, and then several players, a 1v many, if you sure. will. Sure, okay. Well, listen, why don't we go to the table here and take a few sort of sample turns just to give an idea of what you can do in the game. Does that sound good? Yeah, let's do All it. All right, let's do it. All right, as we said, we've sort of got things mid-game. In fact, we're going to start mid-turn. And when you start as the gangsters, you'll have all your gangster members in your hand, and then you take actions with them. You just place them out so you know which ones you've used already. So we'll say that I've already used these two gangsters, and I want to activate now. We have Skank over here. I'm going to have him move. So they get two actions, right? Correct. Each one of the gangsters gets two actions right. on their turn. I'm going to execute a move action, and his stats here says, says he has a movement of two plus. The reason that plus is there is because each of the gangsters provide additional benefits sometimes to the other gangsters on That's the right. board, right? So as long as I can keep them alive, they can get bonuses like additional movement. Yep. The way movement works here is you don't actually count the squares on the board, you count streets, right? That's correct. So I can, for one point of my movement, I can go all the way until I want to stop on a street. Correct. And I want to run down here for my second point of movement. I actually want to stop right here because I want to attack the police officer. Because while the police officer is alive, he makes it harder for me to burn down the buildings, right? Exactly. He adds two more burn tokens necessary to burn <laughs> okay. any building he's next to. Not to tip my hand, but I want to burn this building down, so I'd like to, <laughs> right. I'd like to remove that. <laughs> um, so now my second action will be an attack, and I guess I should leave this here because I want to show that I'm going to get two dice. Right. Plus one die I would get if... I had this gang member alive. Unfortunately, Tintin is the gang member that you defeated. That's so no right. longer getting that plus one to the attack, it'll just be the straight two. And this is done with the dice, right? The, uh, the combat? That's right. So I'm gonna roll my attack dice too. And what I'm trying to, to get here are, are pairs, right? There are symbols on the die. There's, right. uh, there are six different symbols, and you're trying to pair those symbols up. There's even this little helper card that just lets you know when you pair something up, um, it will uh, give you a particular effect based on which symbol is paired, right? That's correct. And so I'm going to roll, and I mean, the odds of me getting a pair here, not very high. But not super high. Who knows? Oh, no, I did, I did not get a pair there. But if I had gotten a pair, let's just say for the sake of example, let's just say I had gotten a pair here. Uh, let's talk about how the defense would work in and this the, case. Absolutely. Then in this, in this case, the officer yes. would have to defend against that. And the defense is this uh, guitar pick type looking piece that has a crow on it. Right. In his case, it, it says two plus. It isn't the same kind of plus situation on your side. I get benefits based on buildings. All right. The, right. the building cards, if they are burned down, yes. they no longer provide that benefit. So it incents you to burn certain buildings down to take away those benefits. Take away from those me, benefits right? from me, absolutely. So in this case, he gets benefits based on the police station being uh, around. Yeah, due to the limited space we have here, normally you'd lay all the buildings out so you can easily see what the effects are that right. are active, and then you can easily go, okay, I want to burn that particular one. Absolutely, down. yeah. So you would, you would roll the dice so at this point, right? Absolutely. And so if you had, uh, in fact, hurt me, let's say in this case you've got two fire tokens. Yeah. They've got the special bonus here at the bottom, the collateral damage that they continue to do. Now, I have two die that I'm going to roll, and all I need to do is roll one matching symbol. So one fire, and so, I failed. So you failed. If you had rolled a fire, then that would cancel these That cancels yours right? at all. So it's easier on the defense for me to defend against your attacks. Right. Well, it does look like I did fail in this attack, unfortunately, if we go by the original rolls, which I guess we'll, right. we'll, we'll do. We'll, we'll, stick do. To, right. we'll stick to the rolls, but otherwise you would have incapacitated me. Right, uh, which would have taken your defense away from this, this building. All right? the other good guys don't die. We're not allowed to die. <laughs> we just get incapacitated. I'm still going to try to burn this down, uh, and so I'm going to use uh, Fun Boy here. Right. I love the names. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? <laughs> and so I'm going to use this stat here, which shows the, the fire. So I'll get to roll two dice plus one. Because I ha also have a skank in play, and that says all other street demons get plus one fire. That's correct. Okay, so I'm going to be rolling three dice. And fire symbols are what's going to allow me to burn things down. And as you can see, I rolled no fire symbol. So it, the fire symbol, which looks like this, would allow me to place these tokens that you see here. Correct. All right, so we're not having success there. I think the police officer is causing a bit of a distraction, but that's okay. Must be. I still have another player that I can use, and I am going to use Grange here. And Grange can move two. I think I'd like to try to burn this one down because it only needs one. Mm. So one, two, and I get to roll for Grange. Right. Three dice. There's no plus modifier on him. So, or no, sorry, it's the uh, two, two dice. dice. Yes. yes. And there's no modifier here. Right. So I only get the two. 
Hey, look at that. I got the fire. Yeah, Unbelievable. You got the fire. So rather than put the token on here, because it only takes one to burn down, I can just flip it over. So that would end my turn. That's right. And then, and then so when you're tallying up all the burn uh, that you have at the end of your turn, whether or not you are completing your objective, uh, you can simply count the one, the two, four, and five here. So that's six exactly. total. Yep, six total. Just, I'll give a little teaser here, okay? I normally wouldn't show you this, but since we're not going to be playing a full game, I, I need to get seven total strength mm. on the buildings. And then I could have activated my final objective, which I would have revealed and then let you know that then I need to go burn the church. And if I could burn the church, then I would win. Then the so, game's over. But I'm not, not quite there yet. And it's right. your turn. So what I'm going to do is, uh, assuming that I didn't know that, uh, yeah. Eric's, Eric's turn in this particular case in the Crows group, uh, I would like to do something that is advantageous to Eric. Uh, while I do that, I'd like to show you how Eric moves. Because yeah. again, we talked asymmetrical, right? Yes. Uh, so you guys have been moving in the streets. Right. Eric moves on rooftops. And his movement, if we can find his card out, is a three. And it sounds like, well, I only move one more space greater than these guys. Yeah, not. No so I actually skip streets and move over street buildings. So uh, Eric's here. And I could move three, so there's one street. Jumped, yeah. Two, and three, I can reach all the way to the pawn shop. So he can move very quickly around the board. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, so it, it, it just to quickly, if there are a double street in between us, that does in fact count as two streets. Okay. Right? So I won't be able to leap three buildings in that case. <laughs> sure. So I've moved all the way to the pawn shop, and the reason for that is that I would, I'm gonna actually do some burning myself. And this is the only place you can burn. This is right? the only place I can burn. And again, the Gideon in the movie, this guy is a bad dude. He's a snitch. Don't like this guy. I want to burn down his place. And in the game state, what that really does is that is going to be beneficial to you and to myself. Gideon comes out, and his only mission in the game is to run up to Top Dollar and say, hey, the crow's out. He's doing his thing. Um, my benefit for this is that I will gain an extra action. As you can uh, see, that the crow, using his guitar pick, yes. his musical abilities, Very nice. gets four actions until I burn down the pawn shop, and then I get five actions. Okay, so that, for example, you would have just taken an action there. I would have. So I would have right? moved from the four down to the three. Right. Uh, and now I'm going to take one of those actions to burn. So bringing Eric's card back out again, uh, he's got an asterisk. He's got a special on his burn. He also has an asterisk on his an attack. Well, I get the dice yes. equal to my health. In this case, I start oh, five. off five. Okay, well, the odds are pretty good. Here. Eric is pretty powerful. Okay. So again, the idea, you've got a lot of numbers, I've got a lot of power, right. and it's a lot easier for me to do what well, I need to do. Well, let's see if it's enough power. Well, let's see if I can roll an actual uh, flame on yeah, this. Yes, there it is right there. Right there. Boom. So this would set this one that on fire. That would flip over. So now, not knowing that that was your objective, of course, I just inadvertently, <laughs> Thank you. you know, you're like, hey, thanks, Eric, <laughs> dummy. Uh, but in this case, yeah, I'm like, well, I just want the a a extra action. So I would have moved down again for that, s that second action that I took. Right. Now I'll actually move back up. Because Gideon's on the streets. Correct. And so he's on the streets. Now I have three more actions to do whatever I need to do. So the way that the, the Eric and the Crows team function is that unlike everyone getting two turns on your side, my turns are, or my actions are shared between the uh, team. Characters, okay. All right, so the four characters we talked a little bit about were Eric, Sarah, the Crow, and uh, the police officer. And I've just moved Eric. Now let's talk about some of my other allies. Sure, the Crow can do some pretty significant movement, right? The, the Crow could do some very significant movement, and it's as the Crow flies, right? So the Crow right now happens to be in what we call a neighborhood, and he's in a different neighborhood than I am in. And that's just the, 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 the whole tile That itself. is one giant tile okay. is, is the neighborhood. So let's just say, for example, he was this far back. I could fly all the way over to this in, in a straight line. Yes, to another building? To another building. All right. Again, that's... rooftop to rooftop for the crow. <laughs> and it's beneficial to have the crow within the same uh, is it na neighborhood? The neighborhood. Same neighborhood a as Eric because he gets a benefit, right? Absolutely. So in this case, Eric's benefit is the asterisk, or not the asterisk, it's the zero plus to my defense. Because your defense is normally zero. It's normally zero. Without the crow, I am basically defenseless. All right. With the crow, my defense is equal also to my health. So I've got oh, wow. five, five dice in this case of defense. Now, the cool part about Eric right now, until top dollar comes out or until you uh, share your objective and you're saying, aha, uh -huh, yes. uh, I'm unkillable. Okay. So you can be incapacitated, correct. but you can't be... Uh, right. Can't I just lose. go back to the graveyard uh, and I rejuvenate at the beginning of my next turn. Okay. 
So. And, and basically, you take turns back and forth like this until either party has completed their objective, right? Yep, that's it. Um, yeah. How, how long would you say the game typically takes to play? You know, honestly, uh, in all the playtesting that I have done with the game, it's about a 45-minute game. Uh, and, you know, maybe a little bit longer for sure. uh, new players. But of course, it always depends on your play group to some extent, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, playing for the first time here, you know, at the show with some folks, uh, it really only took us uh, just shy of 60 minutes. Sure. So it was, it was, you know... Not that much longer. And, and is this game available now? Is it coming out soon? This is actually coming out not quite on Devil's Night. Yes. Uh, that was the idea. Uh, but, you know, that's a weekend, and those are usually not day good days to <laughs> send a game out. Sure. Uh, it'll come out next Friday. Okay. Well, Richard, thanks so much for taking the time to show us many aspects of this game. There's even more we didn't talk about. There's other decks of cards and other effects that can come out. Absolutely. But that's something, of course, you can explore on your own. But uh, to the rest of you, until the next time, thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.